and um, when I turned around, like half of his pants were down. A second a student coming forward tonight, yeah, speaking only with WBTV to, to detail what she says happened after she reported being sexually assaulted at Hawthorne Academy High School. When I tell you, I turned so red, like I froze. But instead of reporting to police, this student says her complaint was quickly dismissed, and she was told she couldn't tell anyone. I didn't know what to do because I was like, what the heck? Last week, we told you about a sophomore student at Hawthorne Academy High School who was suspended after reporting a sexual assault, but now we're hearing from a mm -hmm. second student who has a very similar story. Thank you for trusting WBTV. I'm Molly Grantham. And I'm Jamie Ball. The school's principal and most leaders within Charlotte Mecklenburg schools have been silent about all of this. WBTV's chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner here now to tell us the latest on what he has uncovered. Nick. Yeah, Jamie, Molly, after our first story aired last Monday, I heard from a former Hawthorne Academy student who emailed the tip line saying her friend had reported being sexually assaulted at the school just years earlier. And instead of calling police, the student was forced to sign an agreement saying she wouldn't tell anyone. Well, we sat down with that friend, a 2020 Hawthorne Academy graduate who's sharing her story publicly right now for the first time. It was my junior year of high school. Until last yeah, Thursday, last Rashika Chamlagai had only told a couple friends about an incident in which she was sexually assaulted by a male friend at Hawthorne Academy High School in 2019. He was kind of like touching me and stuff. And um, I started walking a little faster because I felt really uncomfortable. And um, when I turned around, like half of his pants were down. Chamlagai says she reported the incident to the school's principal. Diane Weston almost immediately. I was very close with the principal. I looked up her, uh, looked up at her like she's my mentor. So she was making our coffee and I go up to her, I'm like, you're not gonna believe this. And I begin to tell her what happened. As soon as I told her, um, she was like, okay, Title IX, Title IX. The immediate attention from Weston and other administrators soon led to Chamlagai spending most of the day in the office. Until hours later, she says, her complaint was dismissed. They later came by and told me um, we didn't find anything in the camera. And I was shocked because I know the camera can get from the front of the school all the way up to the main sign where it is. I know that because I have seen it in the security room before. But it's what happened next that still troubles Chamla guy. I was sitting in the vice principal's room like facing a wall. Um, she was like, don't text your friends, don't text your family. No one should know what happened. And I'm like feeling already overwhelmed because I didn't expect them to tell me what they told me. I thought some actions were going to take place, but later, uh, two or three hours later, uh, they presented an NDA. Only thing I remember is that there were 10 things on there. Um, one main one being that I would not uh, be able to speak about it, tell the male student graduated and I graduated from Hawthorne. Chamlagai says she wasn't given a copy of the document. WBTV submitted a records request for the form last week, but Weston, the principal, has yet to even acknowledge the request. But if it sounds familiar, it could be because the Hawthorne Academy student we talked with last week was asked to sign something similar. The document she was asked to sign is called a no contact retaliation agreement. It actually bars students from discussing their reported sexual assault with quote, others regarding the situation or student. I signed the NDA because I was overwhelmed and I felt pressured because I didn't know what was going to happen if I didn't. Did you feel like you would be punished or face consequences if you didn't sign the agreement? Yes, sir. I thought if I didn't sign it, maybe something permanent could go on my record or something that could affect me getting accepted into a good college and stuff like that. Did you want to report this to anyone else? Did you want to file a report with the police? I didn't know I could. Um, when I signed the NDA, it was I was already scared because I didn't like I'm not very educated on how law works and stuff like that. Um, but like when um, I did ask the principal or like um, I talked with my mom and stuff like that, um, they were just like it's a non-disclosure form. So you believed that you couldn't report this to police because you signed this agreement that you thought prevented you from talking about it? Yes, sir. Now, state law requires teachers and school administrators to refer reports of minors who say they were sexually assaulted to police. I've made multiple requests to both Principal Diane Weston and Superintendent Ernest Winston seeking comment for nearly two weeks, but my requests haven't gotten any 
response. Jamie, mm -hmm. I'll join you on, on your side tonight mm -hmm. at 730 to hear more of this student's story, including her reaction when she first heard our report of that other student right. that aired last week. We'll see you at 730. Uh, Nick, thank you for that again.